how is this really prepared in Tanzania? That is the one thing I couldn't deal with the whole time. Hello honeys and welcome to my channel. My name is Matara Lefazana. Thank you for subscribing at the shooting of this video. I'm at our 59 subscribers. So thank you so much guys for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't, you know, subscribed to my channel, hit that sub subscribe button, hit the notification bell, boom, 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 so you can get notified every time that I post. So mental health awareness month, May. I've been seeing so many people sharing their stories. I, I said to myself, um, I've been thinking about sharing my story for quite some time now. So let us just uh, do this. Um, thank you so much for your attention. Please watch this video till the end. As hard as it may be, just watch it till the end. Before I go any further, let me just take this time to apologize to my mom. Because she'll, she'll be finding out this for the first time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for putting it out there into the world before I tell you. I have my reasons and you probably know why I did that. And I'm sorry to my middle sister, guys. Hey, she's gonna kill me. Come on, so, so later. You know, she's always been my friend and we talk about everything. Me and my sister talk about everything and she knows a whole lot about my life. And my, my sister is the kind of person who would kill anyone who tries to mess up with me. She, even if she had the person who was messing up with my life, she'll find the person and she was directing him up. So, I know not sharing this with you was because um, I knew you were going to kill somebody. So, I love you, girl. And then I'm sorry to everyone who will, everyone who just take this any other way. Right now, I have so many people who I could apologize to, but just own this apology. Alright, so yeah, let us just get right into it. The reason why I came and shot out here on, on the, by the railway line because part of the story, you know, that changed my life, that led to my mental health problems, um, happened right here in the railway line. Mokaboroni, somewhere between block 3 and 16, extension 16. So now this is what happened. Um, I'm gonna try to be as honest as I possibly can. That is why even today I didn't even put up any makeup. Your girl is coming to you with a bare face because I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm not trying to hide behind anything as well. So, um, let me just get right into the story, guys. Um, how my mental health problems came about. It came out about because of rape. I was actually raped twice in my life. And um, we're just going to talk about the first time I, I, I got raped. If, if we're going to do a follow-up video, maybe I'll share the, the, second, the second time. And if you want to hear the, the second story, you can just, you know, comment down below. And also comment with your experiences, guys. Just any, at any point of this video, just pause. And comment you know you can ask me any question you want to ask me there's nothing is overrated nothing is I'm not censored here anything I'll answer as well do not even be shy if you can post your comment on your comment or your question on the comment section you know DM me I will link my, my Facebook inbox or Instagram just DM me and talk to me privately if you want to ask me a question if you want me to help you I'm not saying I'm a professional but I, I'm saying I can I, I have I have, I'm a good listener so what is the camera doing guys it's windy up in here so my stand is like not it's doing the most but I'm sorry about that so anyway if you've got any question any comment you want to express anger anxiety whatever it is you want to ask me good um, there's nothing i'm gonna hide from you i'm gonna do a follow-up video asking all your answering answering all your questions um and then reacting to all your comments if you want to be anonymous just say anonymous and dm me so it's not a problem let us just fight this mental health issues because these things are real and in, well, i'm living in a country where these things are like the stigmas. People don't want to talk about these things. I don't understand why people are being, you know, about this story. So I'm that's why I'm coming out with my story. I got raped when I was 16, guys. Um, I was doing my form three. It was like three weeks before my final examination. We left school early that day, and we. Yeah, <laughs> some guys looking at me like I'm a weirdo. <laughs> so just wanted to say hi to him. 
So another one is looking at me like I'm a weirdo. <laughs> People are crazy. Okay, fine. I'm crazy. So yeah. Because I'm sitting here by the railway line talking to myself. <laughs> okay, yeah. So um, I got a diploma when I was 16. And that day um, I was doing my, I was almost doing my, it was like three weeks before my final exam, my GEC. And that day, that day at school, there was no water. There was no water at school at that day because I don't know what had happened. So we got released around past the 10. I took my friends halfway to their homes and then I would walk home. As I was walking home, this person, the person who raped me, I, I knew the person for like a year or two before that. I still know the person. I, the last time I saw him was like, I think last year, guys, September, thereabout. Um, so I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna answer so many questions that you probably just tune into the whole, to the video until it ends. So now I'm passing by his house and then we're just talking by the by the fence like hey how are you? Yada 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 I'm like ah Tarantia let me see who just says come in I I I go there to get a cup of water. Um now I'm just standing there by the door of his house. It was less like you know two and a half houses. If you are from Botswana you understand what the two and a half houses, you know, where the the, the kitchen door is here and the the bedroom door is literally here it's like an open plan you just come outside and just go directly into the bedroom so now i was drinking the water i said i stood by the door and we just started talking 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 about i can't even remember what i was talking about and then now we were, we were talking shows me something in the house it was just genuinely something show me something and then i just got in there i was still wearing my uniform because i had still not yet been home i went directly into the into the thing um i went directly into the room and as we were there, we were just sitting on the bed, talking, 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 talking. And this was a person who I was safe with. I had no reason to be like, oh, or what, anxious or what. I had been like that with him more than 10 times. And it, he was never the candidate, you know, he was never. That's the thing about these guys. They would never be, like, you would never, you know, thing in my jig. So, now, this is what happened. He just... Start touching me to me, to me in a touching me in a funny I'm like, hey, Alter, hey, la. just leave me alone. And we just we just left the bar, we just brushed it off. And there's like, no, but we should do this. Goes to the door, locks the door. Every time I'm thinking, ah, no, he's just probably joking. But this is just how naive I can get, guys. Anyway, I was 16. So now when he leaves the, the door, puts the key in his pocket, grabs me by the throat, I'm like, <gasps> it's like, no, today you are going to sleep with me. I'm like, why? Since when is that? Was it was? Would that be the case? Today you're gonna sleep with me. That's grabbing my school jersey, you know. It had a zipper here. Tore it open like this. The zipper just agreed with him. Pull, pull down my undies. And this time I'm like, no, no, no! You can't do this to me. Why are you doing this to me? I'm screaming. I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm panicking. He tears off my undies. Forces himself into me. It was the most painful thing. At that time, the pain was too much, and I feel like at some point I blacked out. I can't remember like a lot of the things that happened at that moment because I think at that time I blacked out. It was the scariest moment of my life. The whole time I just saw my mother's face. I saw my mother's face the whole time. I said, This is not happening to me. Because I knew so much about rape. I was part of the debate team at school. You know, we taught this thing school moral education. I said, God, this is not happening to me. Whew. So at the time, I, I blacked out. I remember him just going on and on and on. I told him, well, I just know if you talk about it, I'm going to kill you. He grabbed the pillow, put it on my face because the neighbor, his neighbors were there. And when he finished, I just sat there, I was numb, I was lifeless. I remember that moment vividly, I just, I can't like explain to you in those details because I think I sp after that I spent a lot of time trying to shove that memory down my, the deepest darkest part of my, 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 my thing and it's, it's something I would never recall. So I think even the time I started to, you know, the healing process to recall this thing, I I really couldn't access those memories, you know. 
people are looking at me like I'm weird because I'm here by the railway and people are just crossing the railway and so they're looking at me why is that girl talking to herself in the middle of the railway and she's trying to kill herself and no I'm not trying to kill myself I'm trying to liberate myself and liberate everyone who I know so yeah <clears throat> so yeah that is what happened to me go away just go away <laughs> oh my god he is coming here guys i'm I, i'm i'm serious i want to film yeah now he's coming here let me just pause okay guys um I'm back. The struggle is really I had to get explained to him why I was on the roadway by myself. He actually thought I was trying to kill myself. Anywho, so at that point in my life, after that, I just shoved down the memory behind me and I wrote my, my exam. I actually did well. I actually did well because I didn't want anyone thing to disturb my, my academics. I've always been like, even who knows me will tell you what I'm, I've really loved school and education and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what happened to me. So at that time, after I finished my form, I didn't see the guy again. I went into drinking alcohol seriously now. Because be, at first I was young, I thought I would, you know, I would not be serious. I would drink alcohol like once in a while because I was a kid, when other kids were doing it. But now I started, mm, you know, seriously doing this. So now... After all this that happened to me, I didn't see the guy again until I came from my farm for, I think it was around month end January. This happened in October. I didn't see him again in January. So now when I leave home from Soroya to come to Aboroni, I go to the bus rank and the first person who I see was him. When I left bus rank, that side of the bus rank, I went to the Kamuza Bulukui Route 2. Because he was almost staying along the same route, he was still staying in, still staying in block three. I saw him by the commis there, and I fainted in the bus rank. I fa I actually fainted. I fell. I couldn't breathe. People asked me what happened. I was like, no, I'm like, I, I couldn't eat. And then he got into the first commis, and he went. He left. At that time, I don't know what was going on in his mind. I didn't. I, I would see him occasionally before because after that what had happened after that i went to jesus for like two months so one day one of these good days hmm, one of these good days um this is doing my phone for my sister sent me to show she had a she asked me to go to metro at that time, I was still called Metro to go and buy her something for the baby shower. I walked all the way to Metro. I didn't eat. I was another person who would eat at school. This thing is, I started having eating disorders. So I didn't eat from Thursday. For the Saturday morning, I still didn't eat. I went to to, Sufala, to Metro and I bought, um, I think it was a half jack of black, of what thing? Copper band. It was like half jack is like about 250 mils of copper band. I sat by, by that tree there. I'll put the picture somewhere here. I sat by that tree there. And as I sat by that tree, I drank the entire thing. I drank the whole bottle. I had not eaten for two days. I drank the whole bottle and I went home. My sister didn't recognize I was drunk. Apparently, that day I told her that I want to go stay at home, the village with my mom. I couldn't do this. I had blacked out the whole day. My friend Tato came to my house at that day, you know, and she started feeding me, bathing me, making sure I'm okay, sat with me there for some time. And I, I had to go. My, the following week, this happened on Saturday. On Wednesday, my middle sister came to fetch me. I didn't know because I had not known that story. She came to fetch me and I got a transfer from Jesus to Swanning. When I got to Swanning, I was angry, I was pissed. And one thing that you should know is that this guy gave me STDs. At that time, there were suspect uh, people were suspecting that he has AIDS, and I knew that. And he gave me STDs, and I, I was I felt like ah, I can't have more than 
HIV, I started having womb problems, I started being depressed, I would drink alcohol, I was very suicidal. So um, I was blessed enough to come um, to start dating a guy, I think now second time, I started dating this guy and I told him my whole story. He was still young at that time, I think he was like two years younger, I think two years older than me. And I told him all the story. He was actually the only person who knew for like five years after it happened. He would go with me to the hospital. He said, go get checked. I checked myself. He would go with me to the cave to get counseling sessions. He would go with me to the hospital. And at that point, because I was still, at that time now I was 17. At the hospital, I would go to the hospital every month and they would give me penicillin, that blue injection. Hi. Era. No, I'm just recording a video. Era. Thank you. Era. So he was wondering who's in the real world. And people are people in Botswana will just get concerned about you for things like this. So now this guy was supposed supportive to me. He would talk to me, counsel me. Now when I want to stay at home. So my, my room was like there, up there, my mother's room, house was on the other side. And there was like usually a yard between us, but there was no fence. I would be scared. I would lock myself in the house. I would call that girl to come and sleep with me. That's what I'm doing for home. I would call him to come and sleep with me. And after that whole sex ordeal, rape thing, I didn't have sex for like an entire year and a half. The whole time I was dating that guy, he understood. He didn't even want to like have sex with me. He didn't want to touch me. At that time, I would freak out, I would cry. If sometimes I would, I would be asleep and he would come, he would come and I'm in the middle of the night and then I would forget I'm sleeping with someone, I would jump. And this thing that I had has affected me the whole time because now I started becoming anxious, I started becoming suicidal, I started becoming depressed. It was like, I don't know what attention You are like this, people will never understand, you know. And I felt like I, would, I didn't want to tell anybody. And why I didn't want to report the guys, number one. I didn't report and I have no intentions of reporting the guy now still. So thank you for wanting to help me and asking me to report this thing. I'm not gonna do that. Number one, I was still a student. I didn't want anyone to mess with my academics, guys. I'm I'm like a school freak. I love my education. I'll still go back to school ten more years after this, at the age which I am. I didn't want anything to mess up with my exam. And at that time I was sixteen. I knew people who had reported cases like this and other kind of cases and the police would actually victimize you. They would come and pick you up with their truck and my police people are paying. They would want to interview my mom. People I don't want I don't people I didn't want to bring shame and drama to my mother. And at that time my mother had just been struggling retrenchment. They they forced her to do retirement. So she was still battling that war in that same month with her boss, with her employee with her employer. So she was they were forcing her into early retirement. I didn't want to be another source of pain i also knew my sister would kill the person i also just when i didn't want the shame and the stigma that was because i'm i went to this guy's house i'm not justifying what it was good but i went to his house in my mind i'm like i went to his house so i have no reason to say he read me i literally gave myself to him this is my 16 year old self thinking all these things so now fast forward i went to the cave i I would go, they would give me penicillin every month because I would have terrible pure pains and at one point they gave me penicillin three times in a month because I had problems with my womb. The healthcare system was always messed up sometimes because the guy would tell me, no, if you don't, the guy knew my mom, the, the doctor knew my mom said, if you don't accept this, um, you know, penicillin drug, I'm going to tell your mother that you are already studying. To fornicate, you're not a virgin anymore, and to think I was not my choice to be at that place. I didn't, I didn't like it. So now, after this whole day, I started having anxiety, I would be anxious, I would be fearful every night, I would lock up myself in rooms. If I it actually, if I, 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 I've never been a person who slept with anyone. I didn't, I, like my whole life I would have my, my own bed. Even if I didn't have my, necessarily have my own room. 
I have my own bed, so I've never really had the experience growing up at all to share a bed with anyone. So at times when I would have to share a bed with someone for a week, for a month, I'd wake up and I'd freak out in the middle of the night because I would feel someone touching me. I'm like, no, this is not it. Even, I think this thing happened until four years ago. If I was dating someone, sleeping with them in the same bed, I'd freak out. I was also suicidal because I felt unclean. I felt like I deserved this. I felt worthless. I was depressed the whole time and I was very suicidal. My whole life I had been suicidal. And I didn't share this story with anyone apart from that time for a year I shared with my boyfriend. Now when I came back I saw him. I fainted. Now I did my form 4 and my form 5 course away. I came to Kaboroni for tertiary. I went to Limco Queen now in year 2 semester 1. I said, I got this book here at TDJ. This is how now I finally dealt with this issue. I got this book here at TDJ. It says, let go. Let it go. The book where he has his coat like this. Let it go. It's talking about frustrations, pains, and stuff like this. It's just let that pain go. So now, I had to let the pain go. I just had to let it go. Now, this is what happened. I approached, because I someone who I knew, at the time was being in blockade, I approached him, because the book encouraged someone to talk to the people, you know, I approached him, I made a decision, I prayed, I prayed hard, I prayed so hard, I prayed hard and long, I read that book, I talked to my, that time it was my ex, I didn't tell anyone, and I went to him and I said, I went to, I called him on the phone and I said, can you come to my house? He came to my house. For the first time I saw him again, I said, do you know that day that you were raped me? He said, no, I didn't rape you. I said, okay, so. I'm not going to go, Mana, Rohana, this is one Paela. Who the hell do you think you are? Hey, yara, yara, yara. I started saying all these stories. I cried and I went back home. After some time, he called me. I think after like three months, he called me. He says, I've been thinking about what you said to me the other day. And I just wanted to come and ask you a couple of questions. Can I come to your house? I came to my house. The whole time we sat in the car. And then he says, what happened? I told him. He said, nah, I don't remember it like that. He said, I don't remember it like that. And I said, but that's what happened. I cried and he went home. After like two weeks, he called me. He said, I'm sorry. If you want to take this thing to the police, if you want to report me, I will just stay. Because now he, he, we had been speaking over the phone for some time. So that's how my mental health problems came. This video is just already way too long, guys. So in, in short, I forgave him. I'm just I'm just gonna have to record part two and in the part two I'll talk about why I forgive him how did I make sure I forgive him what was the pay, the experience of forgiving him like how have I dealt with it since how has it changed my life how has it affected my sexual life how has it affected my relationship with God and my relationship with other people so you know ask me questions comment like share share the story with other people because it's not easy you know to share this kind of stories so until we meet again subscribe to my channel guys and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity